Is Mark Zuckerberg ready to be the head of one of the world's largest public companies? With me to talk about that is David Kirkpatrick. He's the author of The Facebook Effect and also founder of the Techonomy Conference. He's interviewed Mark Zuckerberg numerous times in his past. Also staying with us is Bloomberg contributing editor Paul Kodrowski, a former equity analyst and currently an early stage venture investor. David, uh, let me start with you. Uh, as we were just showing, it takes a village to make a man like Mark Zuckerberg. How important has that been to him? Well, actually, I just saw on Facebook today that he had had lunch with Don Graham. So, you know, he's okay. actively engaged with those people. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, I think he has really actively sought the advice of experienced, especially entrepreneurs uh, like Mark Andreessen, somebody who he really looked up to. Sean Parker played a huge role at an early point and still consults with him on a lot of things. Um, and I, I think Mark has had a very good ability to recognize where he's strong and where he's weak and fill in the gaps, either by educating himself or simply by hiring people like Sheryl Sandberg, who are really good at doing things that he can't do and probably doesn't even want to do. Mm -hmm. And you think this has shown up in the way he has behaved so far? As oh, my God. I mean, he's an incredibly good CEO. I think there's no question about that. The effectiveness that he's shown in building this company, I mean, think about one little thing. Facebook has almost never gone down. I mean, there's really never been a system outage of any length. Think about that. You know, from in the entire time, eight and a half years of growth. Compared to like a Twitter or something like that? Compared to any, almost any other site. You know, <laughs> we're supposed to say that. <laughs> just creating that, the culture that would enable that reliability takes good management. Mm -hmm. It's like just an example. You can find a lot of other examples. I know I think he's made mistakes, but he's great. Well, I mean, on that point, and David brings it up in part, you know, having Mark... Mark having Mark advising him, Andreessen uh, yeah. versus Zuckerberg, that is Mark. Andreessen tells a great story where he talks about, you know, one of his first encounters with Mark, trying to give him some advice and talk to him about, you know, sort of the history of computing and everything else. And he's talking about the early days of the browser industry and what he went through. And he talks about, uh, you know, Mosaic, which was what, you know, eventually got commercialized and turned into Netscape. And uh, Zuckerberg said, well, what, what, what was that again? Remind <laughs> yeah. me. I mean, it's a remarkable story, right? I mean, here's an oh, example. Boy. Of a, of, That's you, right. We forget. That's years talking. Right. No, 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 exactly. But I mean, to be able to, Leaving aside that he didn't know, to be right. able to say, I didn't know, most CEOs would bluff it. Right. They'd bluff it. They'd say, yeah, 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 and then just carry on. No, because he's, that's, gr that's a, such a great example. Yeah. He really, if, if you say something that he doesn't know about, he will grill you on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's very easily bored, and if you say something he already knows, he will totally space out. But when you say something right. he thinks is interesting and new, he really, and he doesn't hesitate at all to admit, no, I don't understand but that. Do you think he'll have the patience for Wall Street for being the CEO of now a public company? I think I think not, but, but that's not as important as having people around him who will, right? And this is the story of founder entrepreneurs: is being able to surround yourself with people who, right away out of the gate, have the you know the, the, the quite honestly the stamina and the tolerance for you know boring quarterly issues to be able to sit there and deal with sh shareholders on a regular basis. That's the CFO and the op stuff. But to be able to be the visionary figurehead, there's no reason why he can't satisfy Wall Street doing. Yeah, that. and he's got David Eversman, who's the CFO, an incredibly experienced guy who really gets Mark's mindset and yet can just go and do it himself kind of translating Mark's will but also with tremendous experience um, so I, I couldn't agree more with that well he's built a very successful company and people give him a pass for a bit of his quirkiness and maybe some of his you know uh, his, his for, for his instance his decision to buy Instagram uh, you know and, sent, and gave, gave it to the board uh, while you know where he already had made that decision so certain you know certain types of behaviors he get he gets a pass for because he's built the successful company but at what point does it become tiresome at what point will the oh. hoodie get tiring? One, one, one thing I've heard internally uh, from very senior sources at the company is he does not intend to be on quarterly earnings calls. On the other hand, he did not intend to go on the road show either, and he was induced in the end to do that. So if he ends up finding himself having to waste a lot of time in his mind, spending like a day a month, every quarter preparing, and he's going to really and hate Larry that. And and Sergey haven't either at Google, to be fair. I mean, they don't exactly hang out on quarterly calls. They show up now and then, and it's really exciting, but it's not yeah. as if they're there constantly. So that precedent's been set. Okay.